The Biden administration has recently announced the availability of $100 million in grant funding to reward communities for upping the production of housing. This is an issue that the two of us are super passionate about. So this is awesome. Yeah, so, this is this is the most important issue right now is home ownership of housing, period. Housing affordability. Yes. Yes, it's awesome. Um, so what happened is two years ago, the administration outlined a housing supply action plan where they allocated hundreds of millions of dollars to basically act as a carrot for communities to follow in terms of doing zoning reform uh, and making strides to be able to build more denser housing. The recent announcement, the news here, is the actual delivery of $100 million uh, to reward the communities that have done that good work. These $100 million is going to 21 different jurisdictions across 19 states, and it's going to be used to help shore up public-private partnerships in housing construction. So a good example is happening in Bend, Oregon. They received $5 million grant to develop a five-year plan to ramp up housing construction and address ongoing infrastructure limitations. Um, one of the big barriers to housing construction is obviously the rules and regulations that come with all of it. Mm -hmm. And the National Environmental Protection Agency um, does a lot of good work, but they also hold up a lot of construction. And so yes. one of the points of this was this extensive NEPA review process, pulling it back, letting some of it go, mm. seeing that it already takes too much time. Some of it is repeat reviews that happen in other local agencies that then have to happen again in the federal agency. It doesn't have to happen. And so this retrieval of, of NEPA is something that the White House and Neera Tandon is the director of all this. Okay. And is, this is, this is I think it's usually pronounced NEPA. This is the no, National NEPA. Environmental Protection Act, if yeah. anyone out there doesn't know. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's generally one of the biggest bugaboos. I didn't know that it interrupted housing construction specifically that mm -hmm. much because usually I thought it was for bigger energy type projects. So that's interesting. Yeah. Um, Okay. The one other thing that um, came with the announcement is that HUD, um, Department of Housing and Urban Development, is launching a $250 million legacy challenge, which will award that money to communities who uh, who take on legacy projects that will transform and revitalize neighborhoods. So this is a big thing with the public housing stock. A lot of it is uh, dilapidated and in need of m a lot of maintenance and improvement to be able to be lived in. Yes. Um, so that is a really exciting thing to see as well. How do you think the Biden administration, ha we're coming up to the end of his term. How has he done on housing? Not good enough. Um, I think okay. he did good, but he did not, none of his big legislative accomplishments were housing focused. No. Right. They were infrastructure. It was energy. It was drug costs. It was immediate emergency aid. And None of it was housing construction. Well, and even the the policies that he voiced, I think, more as a political bullhorn were like rent control, which is a policy that I think both of us would generally oppose. Yeah. Um, so I, I agree. Not good enough. I will say this is more on housing than I think the federal government has done in decades. Oh, no. well, yeah. So at least at least we can say compare relatively he's done well. Yes. Um, but not enough to meet the moment. No, not enough to meet the moment. I want to talk about that rent, that rent uh, price control rent cap plan there. Yeah. So basically what, how that's going to work, and Kamala Harris has also signed on to this. Yeah. It will be a 5% rent cap on corporate landlords that own over 50, who rent over 50 units out. They would not be allowed okay. to take out, um, f take advantage of federal tax credits um, unless they abide by the 5% um, rent cap for two years time. Okay. It would also, I think it would also slow down their permitting process. And so if they don't do the 5% rent cap for two years time, then they won't get permitting to build more. So, okay. Listen, it's not great, but again, saying it's rent control isn't totally fair. It's not like he's making a rent control scheme. It's definitely, he's trying to stop the bleeding while we can get more houses online over two years time. That's his goal. But I understand. I, I don't think I'm for this. Um, yeah, no, I get what you're saying. I Hearing that it's only on corporate landlords who own more than 50 units yeah. is encouraging to me. Yeah. Um, however, the fact that... Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I made a mistake. It, in, it includes an exception for new construction. I apologize. I, okay. I, I missed that. 
Okay. The, the idea that it, it will put a pause on the permitting that I dislike. Yeah. Right. Cause that's exactly working in the opposite, opposite direction. direction of what you want to do. Yeah. But it's also hard. Cause like how else are you going to punish them? I get that. Like how else are you actually going to punish them? I guess taking, you would have to find them. Right. But taking away the federal grant money. Yeah. They need a lot of the federal grant money. Yeah. A lot of that is baked into their profits. Okay. So they, that's probably going to be enough to get them to do the 5%. Sure. I'm down to take away the federal grant money. One of the things that I think about with uh, spurring housing at the federal level is like uh, one thing I will give the Biden administration credit for is I like that this is the mechanism that it's rewarding localities yeah, for changing really their good. rules. I like that a lot. I like that. So first of all, I the worst thing is giving credits to renters. Yeah, that's and, the worst. Yes, thing you because you're increasing demand and that's just going to drive prices up even more. Um, subsidizing supply is better, but then it still has to add to the government deficit, right? So the best, the most efficient way to solve this problem is to incentivize locale. I mean, honestly, the best way to really to resolve this problem is to overturn the Supreme Court precedent that says that cities are allowed to zone yeah. on their own. <laughs> yes. um, but that is so far outside <laughs> the Overton window right now. So this is the best alternative, given that communities can govern how their land is used. I'm glad that Biden is choosing this route. Yeah, it's a really good carrot stick approach. It saves the federal government a lot of money. Exactly. In the long run. Yeah. Um, but it's also interesting because it's almost like throwing in a spice of competition mm. into public policy making that I like. It's like it's like oh, all these different localities are competing to get the most amount of houses built. And, yeah. And you know we're we're in a little competition to like make money. That's like kind of a great mechanism. That's right? exactly what it should be. I yeah. whenever I think about an industrial policy, that's how I think. Yeah. It should be. It should be like. Like you have money up front that can help you try to do the thing, but then you also get it as, like delivered as a reward on the yeah. back end when you've achieved the goal. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk about where Kamala Harris is going to be coming from, because now we're moving on um, from the Biden era. And Kamala Harris is proving herself to be more of a progressive bulwark than even Biden was, um, which makes me very That's happy. That's crazy yeah, to know. think about. Um, and she's kind of leaning into the build, build, build mentality. Good. Um, Elizabeth Warren is also leaning in on that, mm -hmm. a, a very progressive senator from Massachusetts. She's leaning in on the build, build, build mindset. Mm -hmm. um, she's saying it all the time now, which I'm very happy about. Um, but Kamala Harris is giving a big speech tomorrow. Today's August 15th. We're recording this. Tomorrow is the day where she's giving her big economic speech in North Carolina. She's going to call for the building of 3 million new homes through um, builder tax incentives that's going to give money to builders if they sell homes to first-time home buyers. Yeah. Which is going to boost up the housing supply probably a lot if we have the zoning and the permitting to build the stuff. Yeah, we are. Because thinking about first time home, home buyers, yes, if we have the zoning and the permitting, we need zoning and permitting that allows for lower end housing. Yes. This is definitely a problem in, I mean, we live in, in Brookline, Massachusetts and in Boston. The best example sits directly next to the apartment complex that we are currently in right now so true. because it, it there are five units, I believe, being built on a lot that could fit 30. Oh, easily if, 30. If you built it taller and if you built it, yeah, and if you made the unit smaller. Um, so and they sell for two point five million dollars each. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, it, but but part of that is because you do have these city codes that um, require like certain like probably more distance than you need between houses, um, require higher ceiling heights that you might need. There are all of these parking little requirements. parking requirements. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then when you talk about single family homes, minimum lot sizes are a huge deal. That's a big problem, right? Um, so yeah, we need the rules to allow for these houses that first time home buyers can actually afford. Now, this isn't something that I could confirm. So don't quote me on this. Don't cite this to anybody, but this is something that you can cite later if it's proven right tomorrow. Okay. Okay. There are rumors that Kamala Harris is also pushing for a $25,000 credit for the buyer of a first time home, mm. which we don't like. No. But if this is in combination with a big spur in housing construction, it could make me feel a little better about it. Um, yeah. Right? If you're also <laughs> increasing the supply as you're increasing the demand, but as long as you're increasing the supply faster than you're increasing the demand, then it should be okay. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 a hard, it's a difficult hurdle because this is going to help a lot of people get a nice down payment, right? That's yes. great. Yes, yes. Um, which is good. 
Um, it'll also be great if they hook up with a builder who's selling to a first time home buyer mm -hmm. and then you're getting the incentives on both ends and then yes. the policy's working perfectly. Yeah. Right? I wonder on the so on the supply side, yeah. do you worry about the confidence of the builder that they'll be able to find a first time home buyer? No. Really? No, I do not. Well, because but again when when they're if I could buy a home I would. When they're calculating up front yeah. their profit. Yes. Are they going to be able to bake this in? Oh, the $25,000 tax credit or which part? Oh, do no, you mean? Because again, they're saying the supply side subsidy yeah, yeah, yeah. has the the condition that you're selling to a first time home buyer. Right. Right. That might be difficult. It might be like there's going to be some uncertainty there. Like, can I actually sell at the price that I expect to if I know that I need a first time home buyer? Mm, I okay. think I understand that problem. I yeah. think to answer that. I, I'm not going to be able to answer that question on the fly, and I don't know the answer to that. I think the answer we we would have to find the percentage of homes that are first time home buyer purchased. Um, okay, and then see okay how likely is it that and, a house in this area is purchased by a first time home buyer? Like that would be the calculation being yeah, made. Yeah, yeah. And I think the business would be properly able to do that calculation. Okay, they wouldn't be, be too sure. averse to the uncertainty. Right. I think they would be able to figure that out. Okay. Um, but I do know. Where, I think. That makes I guess if point. you are thinking about percentages, though, that that's really only going to be viable for, uh, basically not a corporate landlord, but a construction company that's building a lot of homes. Yeah. Because that's the only way it's going to even out, right? Also, they are the only ones that probably have the capital to do it anyway. I mean, like we probably need like a Leviton 2.0, mm. right? We need like a Le Leviton. Levittown is a area on Long Island where they just copy and pasted some cookie cutter homes and made a whole suburban area overnight. Okay. And people just moved in and filled up the area in a second. Okay. Right. And I think that that's what we got to do again. Mm. Um, and I think it, it has political appeal across the aisle a little bit because yes, Trump is a NIMBY, right? Trump attacks Kamala Harris as wanting to destroy the suburbs and all that. But yes. Trump does want to build more housing just in a different way. Mm. He wants to do like freedom <laughs> cities where he like lots federal, federal land and allow companies to compete and then give them like a lot of tax incentives to build houses in this new undeveloped federal land. That's what he says. I don't know. I don't agree with that. Um, okay. I, I, it just sounds like it wouldn't work. Like there's no do economic people really, activity. In yeah. Do people want to live in the middle of unused federal land? And if they did, wouldn't this, wouldn't the government have kind of heard about that demand before? When, wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't have the private market already been clamoring for it? It if sounds it wasn't so necessary. It, it sounds like, like Trump university or Trump sneakers where he feels like, Oh, I can, <laughs> this, this is like Trump federal land. Dude. People are going to want to live on it because I'm branding it that yes. way. And it's also like, it's like a, you ever see back to the future part two? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it's like Biff owning the casino. Yeah. Yes. Like that's what Trump wants his cities to be. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, funny. I don't even also, I also don't want to think about the dystopia of what it would be like if like Disney just owns its own city and writes its own laws and then has its own charter, even though they basically already have They that. already do. Oh Is yeah. It? Oh geez. <laughs> were you not, were you not trying to make a joke? There? I wasn't. <laughs> that's hilarious. Um, the one thing I want to say is w this issue of whether, uh, construction companies could receive the subsidy and whether they would be sure of receiving it or not. Well, how would you feel about wiping out the condition of first-time home buyer? Well, I would just whoever be, wants to buy the home. I would be worried about landlords buying and then renting. And you think that's not okay? No, it's definitely not okay. I'm not that... I don't no, think that's I think, that problematic. No, I think home ownership is something we should preserve in the country. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, this is a whole... That's a whole other conversation. ...deeper arguing, because I'm not sold on that. Yeah, that's a whole other conversation. That could be a good debate one day if we wanted to... A good deep that. dive. Yeah, that would be a good deep dive. Yeah, it would.